I do want to get to the Braves, but first I want to get to UGA uh, because I think that there is a massive, let me rephrase that. I think there's a large overreaction to what we saw yesterday or Saturday rather and Georgia struggling again for the second straight week. Um, okay. You have to kind of go beyond the box score and dig a little bit deeper into the game to figure out why they struggled. Objectively, in this game, folks, um, if I told you before the game that Georgia would have twice as many first downs as Missouri, they would have 190 yards more than they did in the game, they would outrush them, they would outpass them by over 100 yards, um, they would hold on to the ball for nearly 10 minutes longer than Missouri did, you would have said Georgia wins this game by three touchdowns, four touchdowns, whatever it may be. Because that's exactly what the box score tells you. Where did the dogs go wrong? Well, they struggled on third down. They went four of 13. That's not good. That's not going to get it done. Okay. Four of 12, guys. Four of 13 is less than 30%. That's not going to get it done. And they fumbled the ball twice. And they had two turnovers. That's why this game was so close. They made mistakes. I said it before and I'll say it again. There is only one team in the nation that can beat Georgia. That is Georgia. That's it. Period. Now, does that mean they can lose a game somewhere? Yes. But it means they're going to lose a game because they're playing sloppy football. And that's what they did against Missouri. They struggled to get the ball into the red zone early on and had to settle for field goals. and. Uh, twice they settled for field goals in the third quarter, not putting the, the ball in the end zone. 28-yarder and a 29-yarder. You know what that means? That ball was on the 19 and the 18, respectively. That means they snapped it from inside the 10. Okay. Got to convert in the red zone. Are those things, and here's what you have to ask yourself, are those things all fixable? And the answer is yes. I don't think it's a scheme thing. I don't think it's a play-calling thing. I think they just didn't execute well. And that's something that Kirby has to, to, to put on them. Kirby has to get these guys refocused. Uh, and if they struggle again for a third straight week as they, they play Auburn this week, what does it really mean? I, I don't know what it really means other than survive in advance. And I'll say it before and I'll say it again, that when you're the defending national champion, you sort of get the, the, the benefit of the doubt. You don't need style points. I mean, did we, did we try to make Alabama several times over, fall, you know, the whole dynasty fall because of some bad games and some big-time losses? Sure. But I think that's different when you're talking about a dynasty. You know, when Clemson won its first national title, the following year it was, eh, who cares? You know, they're the defending national champs. They'll be there again. Okay. So I'm not going to over-worry about Georgia at this point in time. They will put together a game where – they go out there and they spank somebody. Let's hope it's this week against Auburn. Alabama did that this week. For all the concerns that they had against Texas and everything else, and it was like, ooh, maybe maybe there's some holes here. I was somebody doing it too. This doesn't look good. Doesn't look like the Alabama we, we see and know. And it didn't. They go out and get a statement win on the road against Arkansas, a really good team. And uh, they beat them soundly and covered the number two, neither here nor there. But – you know, you have to put all this stuff and take it all into account, folks. This is not um, this is not an easy road for any team to try and repeat. So surviving and advancing and moving on should be more than enough for Dogs fans at this point in time. Stetson Bennett isn't a problem. Uh, I don't think the offense is a problem. I think when you look at a game like we saw in week one against Oregon, how – crisp they were offensively and how much they were able to execute everything near perfectly, which is why they scored touchdowns on all seven drives. I mean, again, go back to what happened on the first two drives that they had in the third, or I'm sorry, the two field goals they settled for in the third quarter. Guys, if those are touchdowns, Georgia ends up with a lead in the fourth quarter, and then this whole thing looks a lot different. And feels a lot different. But it should say something to you that this team was able to, hey, 
guess what? Need a score here, go down and get it. Need a score here again, go down and get it. That's what good teams do. And I will say this, that I thought that, I thought that Missouri did a huge, huge favor to Georgia in the second quarter of that game where they decided to settle for a field goal with three minutes and 16 seconds left instead of going for a touchdown. And I even tweeted, it was that's gutless coaching. You have the number one teams on the ropes, and you have a 13-3 to three lead. The hell is an extra three points going to do for you? Nothing. Oh, by the way, you score a touchdown there, and that's four more points, and you're up 20-3. to three. Guess what happens? Yeah, what was the final score? 26-22. Would you lose by four because you settled for a field goal? That's loser coaching, folks. 100%. Georgia took advantage of it. It's why you don't give any extra opportunities to the best team in the country. If I'm a head coach and I go for it there and don't get it and I lose the game by three, I can live with it. I can absolutely live with it. You lose a game by four when you could have scored a touchdown that you could have won the game or tied the game, yeah. Put your head on the pillow last night knowing that you were chicken bleep because that's what you were. So Georgia takes advantage. But don't worry. I I don't think there's anything you need to worry about with the Georgia Bulldogs. They're going to be fine. This schedule won't challenge them. We could talk big picture stuff about what Georgia is and isn't and how much they're going to have struggles down the rest of the way, maybe against Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Kentucky, like that stretch down the last four games of the year or four of the uh, the final five. Worry about that in a couple of weeks. they got two more home games against Auburn and Vanderbilt before a bye. They'll get right. They will get right. They shouldn't struggle again. And again, the only reason they struggled with Kent State was a ton of mistakes, turnovers, drop passes. That stuff's got to get fixed, and it's on Kirby. 